welcome to the Through the Lens of Learning podcast. If we haven't met, hello, I'm your host, Dr. Tracy Schroyer. I'll give you two words that summarize me to a T, lifelong learner. Join me as I share a bit about my own journey of curiosity, learning, and wonder. You'll also get to hear from some phenomenal individuals on what they're curious about learning and what they have to share too. Are you itching with excitement yet? I am, so let's get started. Thank you, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Through the Lens of Learning podcast. I am joined today by Taylor Imch, and Taylor, thank you for joining us. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Yeah. So Taylor is one of the 2022 Prime Pageant winners, and uh, Taylor, before we get started in and talk about your journey with Prime Pageants and just your learning journey overall, Can you share with the audience, like, how would you define learning? Sure. So I heard a quote, I'm not sure if it's by anyone in particular, but it goes a little something like, if you are unwilling to learn, no one can help you. But if you are willing to learn, no one can stop you. Oh, that's powerful. I like that. Love it. (laughs) All right. So Taylor, can you tell us, like, Uh, Before you even heard about Prime Pageants, had you been in a pageant before? I had not. I never considered myself to be the the pageant type that I had seen on TV or movies or things like that. So truly never gave it much consideration, but I admired the women that I saw anyway. (laughs) All right. So how did you find out about Prime Pageants and what was it that made you decide hey, I'll go ahead and give this a try. So the director, Kristen Ayers, is actually a very close family friend of mine. So Kristen has been kind of a big sister figure to me since I was young. And she's always been a part of my life and someone that I've really looked up to. And she introduced me to the pageant world before Prime was even created. She was a part of another system and she was telling me about all of the great things that she was doing in this system, but then eventually transitioned into her wanting to start a system to kind of correct some of the things that she was seeing in her current system and just with her experiences as well. And they were all solutions to the things that I had been hesitant to join pageantry in the first place. So it appealed to me even more that she was trying to fix some of those things in the industry. I love that. I love that. So what happens? You sign up to be a part of Prime Pageants, and I know Prime Pageants is different than other pageants. So can you walk us through, like, what what were those things that you did in the very beginning? Sure. um, And kind of what that journey looked like? Sure. So I joined in the inaugural year of Prime Pageants. So obviously the very first year was a little shaky and a little, like, we're going to try this out and just see what sticks because we were just really passionate about getting started that even if it wasn't perfect, we were running for it. And Kristen did a really good job of basically just running with it and keeping up the best that she could. And that started with appointing Queens. So my interview process looked like a video submission that truthfully I did in my car at the gym And I just sent it to her right away. And she called me, did an interview over the phone. And then after about a week, um, called me and let me know that I was being appointed Miss Ohio Prime Division Three. And from there, I just really leaned on Kristen as a mentor and with the guidance from her. And as more and more women started to join, it just kind of emphasized my passion for like all of the things I wanted to do in the community and getting to know all of the other women really lit that fire as well. I love that. I love that. So uh, I know that the the queens that I've talked to so far on the podcast, uh, everyone has a platform. Mm-hmm. So can you share with us what is your platform and why are you so passionate about that? Sure. So during my time as Miss Ohio Prime Division Three. I was really focused on the mental health journey that we take during a physical transformation. So as a competitive bodybuilder, that transformation has always been really important to me. During my time that I am training and prepping for a bodybuilding competition, I notice an immense change in 
my mental health and it just gives me more of a leadership mentality. The routine makes me really focused and I just feel like I'm at my best when I'm in a good routine. So during that time as Miss Ohio Prime, I was really focused on good habit forming, good routine making and intention setting. So within that time, I was sharing my story to the bodybuilding stage, and I also created a journal called the Intention Journal that is all about habit forming and manifestation, and it's to just promote healthy habits. So that is actually available on Amazon now. And with that transition, um, as Miss USA Prime Division Three, I have kind of shifted my focus to looking at kids that are new to their schools in high school. So when I was a kid in high school, I transferred schools every single year of high school. So every year I was the new kid and I felt like it put me at a slight disadvantage compared to my peers when it came to scholarship opportunities, sports, friend making, and just feeling comfortable in my school in general. And so I started a scholarship program called New Kids Can that helps kids impacted by moving schools gain scholarship opportunities. And my journals right now, all of the sales are being funded to the scholarship program. That is so awesome. And Thank that's you. something I don't think we don't think about, like the new kids coming in to school, especially high school. It's like, hard. <laughs> Those could be critical years. Mm -hmm. It's definitely yeah. hard. It tests your, your friendships. It tests your social skills and especially sports. That, I think that was the biggest impact for me was that mm -hmm. I was a cheerleader. I was a competitive cheerleader for many years. And when you move schools, you kind of miss that window of tryouts. And when it comes to scholarships, when they see that gap in the timeline of why weren't you cheering this year, it puts you at a disadvantage to get those scholarships. And having an athletic scholarship in college is huge. So yes. it definitely put me at a disadvantage in that aspect as well. Right. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. I love that. And so can people, in addition to buying your journal, can they make donations to your scholarship fund too? Absolutely. Yeah. I will definitely not turn that down. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to get the links for all of that and we'll provide that um, at the end too. And in the description of the podcast. Awesome. I would appreciate that. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. So Taylor, can you give us insight? So this was the, being your first pageant. Mm -hmm. um, what, I guess, what was your experience even leading up? Because I know there's a lot that happens in the months and even maybe even the year or so before you actually get to the stage to participate in the pageant there. That's more of a, like a celebration, right? Absolutely. Like, at that point, the work is done. You're yes. just there to have a good time. <laughs> yeah. So can you give us some insight into like, what did it look like those months leading up? I know that there's like different accountability, there's calls. Um, so what are some of those things that you're doing with the other, um, the pageant participants and, and that kind of thing? Sure. So there is a ton of opportunity within Prime Pageants specifically to work on your self-care to hold yourself accountable and network with your fellow queens and outside of your fellow queens, but you kind of have to do the work. So you can be given all of the resources through Prime, which is such a unique feature of Prime Pageants, is that it has a built-in mastermind that is perfect for women who have never been a part of a pageant system before. So all of the resources are given to you without you really having to go hire a pageant coach or really anything outside of the system. It's all condensed for you in these, these calls and these uh, presentations that help prepare you for the stage. And with that, I was volunteering so that I could um, apply for our, what's called a PIVA. It's basically your personal improvement visionary award. And that is an accountability networking system where we get points for taking care of ourselves in these seven different areas of self-care. And then if you are able to achieve so many points by nationals, you get an award on stage. So part of me achieving that was all of these different events that I was doing to gain points for all of the seven areas of self-care. Awesome. 
Awesome. It sounds like it's just great accountability and like even pushing yourself and challenging yourself maybe to Mm -hmm. do things that you wouldn't normally do. Yeah. And we had this system that was every, I think, Friday morning, we would call in with Kristen just to say something that we were working on for the week. And did we achieve it? If not, what are we doing to pivot and correct it next week? And it also helped us practice having to say our title Um, Because a lot of women don't introduce themselves with your title and getting on stage, you're nervous. If you haven't been practicing it consistently, you get tripped up on it. So it was a good opportunity to do that as well. That's awesome. Very cool. cool. (laughs) Here's my question for you. So uh, one of the things that um, I know there's some women that may be listening that are on the fence, like they've made through this podcast or something else, heard a little bit about prime pageants, knew that, or have heard that it's a little bit different than a, you know, traditional pageant. If somebody's on the fence and thinking about, I might do this, like it's a great opportunity for the accountability, for the mindset, like all those areas of self care and really putting yourself out there and taking care of you and focusing on you. Absolutely. What would you say to push that woman over the fence to do it? I would say you really have nothing to lose. If you push yourself to try something that you've never done before, getting out of your comfort zone usually never has a negative effect. Anything that you just try, at least you can say, I tried it. Maybe you didn't love it. Maybe it wasn't for you, but at least you can say you tried. There's that little sense of a bucket list in your head that you can say, I tried it. That's all I needed. I got the experience. And truthfully, you're going to gain so much in terms of, like you said, accountability, but also the friendships and the networking and the opportunities that are presented to you just by simply being a prime queen. Even if you don't come in and volunteer 100 hours in a year, or if you don't do all of the little optional tidbits that Prime has incorporated, if you're not on every phone call, if you're not traveling to every launch party, you still are considered a prime queen. You still have that built in sisterhood that just naturally comes with it. And I just can't think of any reason why you would want to talk yourself out of having that type of opportunity. It's been really uh, amazing to, to hear the stories of the sisterhood, like even in conversations during the podcast episodes and outside of those just to hear the women helping other women, you know, when maybe you need somebody, you need somebody to help pick you up or help hold you accountable. Or uh, even uh, I think Marita was talking about just the other day, somebody helping her with her dress, one of her uh, dresses for, uh, for the pageant. So that is so amazing. And I think it's harder to, as women get older, to find that sisterhood and to find a place. And I think I hear a lot that the women that are from Ohio, because our director is also from Ohio, so we've kind of formed this really close network that women who are outside of our state maybe feel a little isolated Mm -hmm. and kind of are a little more reserved because they aren't super in close proximity to a lot of the other queens. And to that, my response would be then recruit, like, let's get your best friend, let's get your sister, let's get your mom to join. Like this is such a great opportunity that isn't so ingrained in what people typically think pageantry is Mm -hmm. that you can pretty much do anything with your, with your title, with this platform and opportunity. So for example, we have a mother and daughter duo that just joined us in Florida, which I am so excited to see how that relationship works out this year. Yes. They're going to grow a lot individually and together. I Absolutely. Yes, yes. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. So Taylor, you've not been in a pageant before. So when you got to the pageant week or the couple of days before the actual pageant and leading up to that, what were you feeling? Like what, what were you experiencing just being in that environment? And probably a lot of these people, maybe you haven't met before, like maybe some of the local women, Mm -hmm. Um, Just what was that like for you? So honestly, I expected to feel a lot more nervous than I did. I'm, I'm really no stranger to the stage, but just the environment in general, I am typically not one that has made friends very easily. I think just with my background, I immediately feel 
judged just by walking into a room, especially with women. It's always been hard for me to form bonds and friendships with women because a lot of my friendships throughout my teenage years were temporary or very superficial, just given my situation. So I expected to feel a lot more nervous than I did, but truthfully, everyone was just so excited to finally see each other in person and not through a screen that it was just hugs and excitement and some tears. And everyone was just so welcoming that if any nerves that I might've had gone, <laughs> that was really good. Neat. Very neat. <laughs> Uh, so, and for you getting on stage and participating in the different events that happen, what was that like? Like, did it feel very different from what you may have anticipated or just what was that like overall? It definitely did because I have been on stage a lot for theater and things in the past, but most recently since like 2018, I've been on stage for bodybuilding competitions, which means that I prep for months and months and months to be very lean and very put together on stage to basically just be judged on my body. There's no speaking part. There is no convincing the judges or talking to them or anything like that. It is truly only what you look like and what you present on stage. And so mentally, I had to tell myself it's more than that this time. They get to know you. They finally like you get to show who you are and talk and be a big personality on stage. And so that transition was very interesting for me, but I mean, I felt very natural being on stage and I think I, I think I did pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what about when they actually called your name? Like, what were you feeling? So I was down to the, the top two with my girlfriend, Ala, and she was incredible. She as soon as they called her name and I found out that I had won the national title, she Ooh. yelled, you just won your first pageant. And Aww. she was so cute. And I, I couldn't have stood up there with anybody else and had that same experience. So she was great. I was very proud of myself and just really grateful for the opportunity. What incredible support too. Yes. To be able awesome. to cheer you on like that. <laughs> yes. Great. I love it. Um, so from here, like now that you won the title, what does it look like for the next few months, the next year? Like, what does that mean that you won the title? So right now I am really focused on the scholarship program as we kind of prep for spring. That's when I'm going to start having applicants for the program. And I'm really excited and hopeful that I will be able to fly out to whomever wins this scholarship and get to present the very first New Kids Can scholarship to them in person. So I'm really looking forward to that. I am also obviously really promoting my journal sales and promoting just how they can help and improve people's lives and habit forming. But I also am taking on this little side task that's just something I've always wanted to do, which is learning American Sign Language. Um, I had an experience with a gentleman in our grocery store who works in our grocery store. And through a very interesting interaction, I found out that he was deaf. And it has been weighing heavy on my heart that um, this interaction wasn't as of quality as it could have been if I would have learned that skill. So just something that I would like to have in my back pocket. So I will be doing that as well. That's awesome. <laughs> I love when I hear people wanting to learn a new skill, pick it up. And especially for that, for that experience and, and then being able to do that. So, yes. <laughs> uh, so Taylor, for your scholarship, do you have a goal? Like how much do you want to raise by the spring? Yes. So I currently have a goal of a $1,000. Um, anything more than that would be incredible, of course, but I am over halfway to that funding. So um, I think I only need to sell around 20 journals or so in order to uh, hit that number. But um, like I said, anything more than a 1,000 would be 
incredible. <laughs> right. Even if you could give away more than one scholarship, like how cool would that be? Yes. And they actually have asked me if I was interested in doing another. And I was like, let's see if we can get this one funded first. <laughs> you can always have that stretch goal. You can always Yes, of course. Yeah. So for your journal, you talk about it being an, in an intention journal and there's mm -hmm. some things about manifestation in there. Who would you say is your ideal person that would really be able to leverage this journal to its fullest? I would say someone who just needs to maybe take a step back. Maybe they have all these goals and they're just kind of like flying out there in space, but really just need reeled in. Like I like to think of things as I'm going way far out there in the terms of possibility, but I just need reeled back in a little bit. It's always easier to dial it back than to like push forward in my head. So this journal is really formatted so that the very first page is your like big ideas. You can brain dump anything and everything that you've ever wanted to do on this page. But then the next page is going to be breaking down those big ideas into small achievable goals. So it's your goal, how you're going to achieve it in three bullet points and by maybe a deadline or a date that you're giving yourself. And then each page from there is a day. So it's, to, it's supposed to encourage like slow mornings of just really focusing on what can I do today to move myself forward, even if it's just an inch, just get myself moving in the right direction, but also be in the moment, focus on the gratitude of just having the opportunity to improve. That's good. I know a lot of people that could really take advantage of that. So. <laughs> I think everybody is just very busy that if you have even five minutes of your day to focus on how you can improve yourself, that's that's a very achievable five minutes. <laughs> right, right. And amazing how much progress you can make even by slowing down and not trying to, you know, push your foot on the pedal and go you know, <laughs> fast forward, but just to take some time and even reflection and preparation and those kinds of things. Exactly. I think people's mornings are just so fast that if you just take a second to focus on how am I going to lay out this day so that I can improve even just slightly, I think it's worth it. Right. Right. <laughs> Definitely. All right. So Taylor, um, I know uh, individuals that are listening would love to be able to connect and follow you and follow you along your journey and what's next for you. So where would you recommend that people can do that within social media? Absolutely. So I am on Instagram at Ms. USA prime three. I'm also on there at Tay underscore with a crown. You can connect with me on either account. I will see it. So that's great. I also have my website, which is taylorimsch.com. Through there, you can access my Amazon shop, my YouTube channel, and all of my updates of volunteering and what I'm up to next, appearances, travel, all of that fun stuff. <laughs> and I took a sneak peek at your website. I think it was earlier today. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this girl has a lot going on. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I, yeah, I try great. to keep it all up to date on uh, on my website. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, this is awesome. I thank you so much, Taylor, for joining me and for sharing a little bit about your journey. And uh, I wish you well. And hopefully we'll be back here next year having a conversation about where you've come over the last year, right? I would absolutely love that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again, Taylor. And for anyone listening, uh, we will see you on the next episode. This podcast is brought to you by Tracy Schroyer, PhD, LLC. If you enjoyed this episode, we invite you to share with your network and keep listening. Thanks again and have a great day.